welcome whether you're here in person or you're viewing this online. Welcome to our respectful viewing of Good Friday. Today is when we look back and we reflect upon the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Uh, we reflect back and we understand that our sins have been paid for. Today, during our service, we're going to have a couple moments of uh, silent reflection. Later on, we'll have some scripture read, and after each scripture is read, a candle will be lit. After that candle is lit, we're going to have just a small moment for us to sit in silence and reflect back on that part of the scripture. Of course, tonight our scripture will be coming from Mark 14 and going to Mark 15, if you want to go ahead and find that in your Bibles. Right now, I'm going to invite the praise band to come forward. And as they come forward, we're going to sing a song that we've sung many times called King of Kings. And as we sing the song, I just ask that you prepare your hearts to go into a moment of worship.
Let's pray. Lord, right now, as we move into this time of reflection, I pray that our hearts are open to you. I pray that our minds are clear. And Lord, let us not hold back, but fully give to you what you want right now, which is our devotion. Lord, we love you. It's your name we pray. Amen. Mark 14, turn to verse 3. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfumes on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages, and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone said Jesus, why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can, and you can help them anytime you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Mark 14, 17 through 26. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely, you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied. One who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Mark 14, 32 through 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going to a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. 
Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but, your, but what you will. He then returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the, weak is fle it, the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning a third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Mark 14, 43 through 51. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With them was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus when they seized him. He fled naked, leaving his garment behind. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. When we heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days will build another not made with hands. It even then their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fist, and said, Prophesy! And the guards took him and beat him.
Mark 15, 1 through 15. Very early in the morning, the chief priest with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner from whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrections who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with one of you, call, with one, the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified.
know not what they do. Behold, thy son. Behold, thy mother. Father. Mark 15, 42 through 47. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Today, we call it Good Friday. I'm not going to do a full sermon. I am going to talk a little bit. And I'm going to try to explain why we call it Good Friday. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, so if you've been here long enough or if you've seen me preach before, you've probably heard me say that I had a problem with hanging on to things. I can remember whenever somebody has done something wrong to me, even whenever I was five years old and I'm 32, I still remember whenever somebody has done something that I thought was wrong and they did it against me. But there's something else that goes with that that's two-sided. See, I also remember everything I've done wrong to somebody else. I can remember things I did, I did 20 years ago. And I remember them like it happened earlier today. I can remember people I've hurt, not with just my words, with my hands, with my actions. I can remember times that I know I've hurt God. I 
And once again, not just with my words, but with my actions. Have you ever seen a whiteboard and you can write something down on it and you try to erase it and no matter how hard you try, there's still a little something there. Well, I watched a video earlier um, today from a guy called Francis Chan. He made that point excellent. And he said, the reason why it's still there is because you're trying to wipe it away. See, the things I did wrong, the things that hurt people, I have tried my best to forgive them, and it doesn't work. I have tried my best to look in the mirror and see somebody different, but it doesn't work. And the reason why is because I was trying to do it myself. I was trying to forget those things myself. I was trying to forgive myself for those things. But it's not my place to forgive. We know that God cannot allow sin in his presence. He won't allow sin in his presence. There has to be a price paid for every sin that is committed. The wages of sin is death. Blood has to be spilt in order for there to be forgiveness. Which brings us to Good Friday. Good Friday sounds a little off considering that Jesus was not only crucified, he was tortured. He was not only tortured, he was humiliated. But still we call this day Good Friday. And the reason why we call it Good Friday is because through that sacrifice, through that humiliation, that torture, that crucifixion, that death, We are forgiven. Our whiteboard, our trial and race board, it is clean. I still struggle with holding on to things I did. And the reason why is because I haven't asked God to forgive me for them yet. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because I'm not ready to let go of them. I don't know if it's because I don't know if I fully deserve that. But maybe somebody who's hearing this feels that same way. But I want you to know, and I want myself to know, that we do deserve forgiveness. Jesus died for us. He wants us to accept that. He wants us to accept that forgiveness and to let go of all those things that we hold on to, both what people have done to us and what we've done to others. We have to let go of them. Right now, if you think that Jesus wants to come back, and to see you crying about something you've committed, you're wrong. Jesus wants to come back and see you rejoicing because you've been forgiven. And he wants to see you living a life that is no longer held back by sin, but is pushed forward through grace. This Sunday coming up is Easter Sunday. And I'm not going to steal too much of Captain Patrick's Sunday and talk too much about that. But one thing I will say is this. Yes, Jesus died on the cross. And yes, Jesus died. But we do not worship a dead God. 
we worship a living God. I'm going to go ahead and ask the praise band to come up. And we're going to play a song called Living Hope. And this song is going to close out this service. And I'm going to ask that um, after we sing through this song, that Lieutenant Laura, if you don't mind, closing us in prayer. But today, as you watch this, tonight, as you go to bed, do take time to understand the sacrifice that was made for you. Take time to understand that you are forgiven. And take time to understand that it doesn't matter what you did. Jesus still died for you.
And Lord, tonight we remember and observe the sacrifice that you made for us. And Father, Lord, I just pray tonight that it does not get past anybody who is watching. That those images that are portrayed in the video, we know they're not even close to what reality was. The pain and the torture that you went through, Lord. The pain that we feel today is nothing compared to the pain that you went through for us on our behalf. And Lord, tonight I just pray that anybody who is pain, disappointment. Lord, I pray that they see what you went through for them so that they, in the midst of pain now, can look to you for help. And they have a Savior who has been there and who understands what this pain feels like and who came to this earth not to condemn the world he said but to save it and Lord I just pray anybody who is walking in condemnation right now things that they have walking and have and carrying shame around with them Lord I pray in Jesus name that you release that shame from them Lord Help us to know how to take off the sin that so easily entangles and lay it at your feet, Lord Jesus, and exchange it for the freedom that you give through your sacrifice on the cross. Thank you for loving us so much that even though you knew that we would not be faithful all of our days, even though you knew all of the sins that we would commit, even though you knew all of those years that we would turn our back on you, Lord, that you still got on that cross for us because of your great love for us. And Lord, our response to you, we want to show our love back to you and our gratitude to you for that. And Lord, we just praise you tonight for this opportunity for us to have life and have life to the full and have everlasting life through you and with you. Father, I just pray that you release all of those chains holding, holding that person down. That person that you're speaking to right now.
less of us and more of you, Lord, and help us to be bold to speak that to those around us about your love. Help all of this stuff that's going on around the world not make us afraid and hide in a corner, Lord, but Lord, I just pray that you give a boldness to your people, Lord, in Jesus' name, that they are no, not afraid to tell others about your good news and your love. Thank you for your sacrifice, Lord.